Okay, time to wrap this up. We've had another good day of trading. Not all the markets were um, uh, good for us. Uh, we started off this morning in the E-mini wanting to sell failure. Basically to take out 85 to 90 and we could buy where I thought support was at 70 to 75. Uh, market made it down to 65 and there's no uh, doubt as to why it made it down to that number. It's the uh, high volume number. Um, when a low volume number holds, the market goes to the high volume number. And that's the way it works. Uh, so um, you can see right here that resistance basically holds, and we've got support down here in this 55 to 60 area, and that's where we are. The attractor is right here at 65, and we made it to that. Now we have an outside day that usually... It usually means I'm trying to do a recording and not pick up Henry's barking. So it's um, the way it goes. So we got an outside day, and that usually means trading range. Looking at the uh, F2 screen. Hello, Henry is getting a lot better than he used to be. Right. In the old days, he would be ballistic, so he's done his job. He's barked once, and hopefully that's all we're going to get out of him. You never know, though, with Henry. Okay, we have a B in the overnight. The idea was this morning to self-resistance, basically in this 85 area, 84 to 86. Uh, that was steadily lowered as the day progressed. We have a D pattern right here. We got a new move out of the middle, a mom. So, I mean, everything's set up by our rules and the patterns that we look for, and it produced really, really great trades uh, for us. We had um, the high volume number at 65 pull the market to it. So, I mean, it's just it's just a textbook trade. And the uh, key thing was being able to put the market in context and say the trading range would hold. And it did. So as you progress, you'll be able to make these calls too. So on the assumption we're going to close this baby below 70, this is this low volume area right here. The low volume number is 70. Um, that would tell us we should retest support and or go lower. And current support is at this 59.60 level. So uh, last rotate up was 72. We'd be selling the uh, 70, 72 area, selling failure to take out 72. Second sell would be selling 75. Uh, on the buy side, um, I think we could go a little lower, so we'll make it 60, 62. And then our 55, 57. And there we have it. So the the E-mini this morning, we started off looking at the short side first. It was the first trade up. We were at resistance, and it worked out really, really well. On the note, we thought we would be a little lower, but we would not break. We were hoping to buy um, 13s to 17s, actually 15s to 19s, and uh, we said it might take 21s to get in, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, market opened uh, and sold on its first rotation down in the day session, found support against 20, did not take out the overnight session low. Uh, the best you could have bought was 21. 
multiple opportunities to buy the uh, 24 area. Could have bought it better, uh, but that should have been the worst you filled. And in the market did trade up to 126, 126, 01 and a half. Uh, you can see right here that we have ourselves um, a match day. Yesterday's high, yesterday's low, uh, and it's held. And uh, so the market is in development right now, setting up for its next move. Uh, probably going to come out of this uh, 28 area, give or take a little bit. So uh, we definitely are looking at a P. Uh, we can buy weakness. And we can sell failure to take the market higher. And you can see the attractors up here at 2608. No news to drive tomorrow's trading. We have another. Um, uh, the biggest news tomorrow is going to be the FOMC April minutes. And the market will be looking for guidance, confirmation, insight into the Fed's next move. Um, some people are saying interest rates could be raised as soon as the first quarter of 2015 if the conditions are met. Uh, those conditions are growth in the job market, a uh, recovery there. Hard to see how that's going to happen with all the uh, curves that are being thrown at us. Uh, I, I, I just love these politicians. They go out there and they talk about it. This growth is unacceptable. And they never admit that industrial and tax policy is what holds us back. And the more the Fed tries to support uh, their dual uh, uh, objectives of full employment and no inflation, uh, the more the administration gets out there and cooks the books. We're getting hit now probably with an endless stream of CO2, which has been deemed a pollutant, a dangerous pollutant by our Supreme Court. You know, how stupid can you get? I mean, if it weren't for CO2, which happens to be less than four-tenths of one percent of the atmosphere, to deem that a pollutant. I mean, it just, that they do proofs and studies all the time. If you increase the CO2 environment around plants, you increase plant growth, that throw off more oxygen. It's kind of like, well, duh. Uh, without CO2, we don't get the oxygen we need. Uh, but in our, their infinite wisdom, it is a pollutant, and the EPA is going to make sure we don't pollute. So uh, we that's going to curtail growth, too. Double distribution higher. Right now, the uh, trade is to sell failure to take out 1.5 to 5. Then our second sell zone will be 7 to 11. On the buy side, it's 25 to 29, um, unless the E-mini just explodes and recovers into the close, and um, the E-mini can do that. doesn't require a logical move. It requires volume going to the buy side. And who would do that? High-frequency trading programs. So And for those of you that the, the E-mini offers fabulous opportunity because of the um, volatility inherent these days in the um, E-mini, but it doesn't trade the fundamentals consistently uh, as the fundamentals say it should. Uh, it doesn't honor support and resistance as regularly as uh, the financials do. Uh, it's a game of gunning stops. It's just the tuition costs to play the E-mini are much higher. In fact, I think they're the highest in the E-mini than they are in any contract. Not to say that you can't make a lot of money trading the E-mini, but it's not usually the vehicle for a beginning trader. Ah, I love the E-mini. I'm in the stock market my whole life and everything. How can you say that, Charles? Well, just See how long it takes you to get a bottom line with the E-mini as opposed to the note. And when you're consistently achieving, making a little money, a little bottom line with the note, then go over to the bond. And if you look at the rotations in the bond, the average uh, um, daily trading range, the number of rotations you have, uh, 22 uh, ticks uh, is a pretty good size box for the uh, um, 
bond. I mean, it, they're just great contracts to trade. K volume at 37.15. Uh, that was this morning when we got started. Uh, we were sellers at the buck, 7 to 11. We said if the E-mini didn't sell, otherwise we liked the buy side. We were buyers at uh, perhaps 25, but we were trying to buy 17s to 21s. And the low is 23, so there was the 25 that came out. Uh, the market uh, did stall in the um, 7 to 11 area right here until after lunch. Did not produce much of a trade to the short side. Uh, so market basically traded up because of weakness in the E-mini. Uh, right now the market closed the day session at 37.08. Last rotate up was 12, so 11 to 15 will be sell 1. Sell to 19 to 23. On the buy side, last rotate down was 4. We're currently at 8. I'd like to buy it cheaper, but we're going to make it 1 to 5. If the E-mini rallies, we do not want to get long against the buck. And then 25 to 29. The knob spread didn't do much today. When We came in this morning at basically... Um, Seven or eight, I had it at uh, eight on the close. Okay, taking a look at gold, um, it's an and like we've talked about. It is a uh, eighty-five minus uh, thirteen ten plus market. Um, there's enough political and monetary unrest around the globe that I don't think you're going to see it sold. Uh, there was some commentary this morning that somebody dropped a five hundred and twenty million dollar load on the gold market on the opening and which is what drove it down to its low and allowed us to get long in the um, 85 87 area so I mean that, that's you can just see right here the market just doesn't spend a lot of time below 85 and if you could look up above here you can see 5 to 10 is where resistance is so we got resistance at 95.97, so we'll move it up a little bit. 97 to 1300 will be sell one. Three to five will be sell two. Always like our number two levels better, but that's where we are. On the uh, buy side, last rotate down was 93. That's pretty close, so we'll make 90.92 buy one. And 85.87 buy two. Looking at crude, crude was actually kind of quiet today, but uh, there's enough political unrest. Uh, there's some stuff going on in the South China Sea uh, with Chinese troops massing on Vietnam's border that uh, don't think crude's going to sell overnight. And Russia, it seems to be pretty quiet between the Ukraine and Russia. Again, we talked about it many, many times that Russia has probably gotten what they need without having to expend any more effort or create any more ill will. Um, and it's the same model that we've been talking about that they used in Georgia. Go in take at least one province in Georgia they took two. Point your tanks at the capital of the country, uh, which Russia did uh, on the northern border, north of Kiev. Uh, do all sorts of military exercises and training. Um, 
around the Ukraine, get the territory that you want, put the Ukraine, Georgia back in their spot, and get on down the road. Uh, and the bonus of the icing on the cake on this deal was that uh, if Russia doesn't take the eastern Ukraine outright, they get $17 billion from the IMF to pay off the Ukrainian gas bill. Pretty damn nice work if you got it. Okay, resistance is at 102.50. This is an aggressive trade, sell failure to take out 250, 275. 103, 103 and a quarter will be sell two. On the buy side, I still like our 101.75 to 102. Worked out well for us today. And then 25 to 101.50. Okay, we're going to look at the um, F1 chart on the Euro contract. Uh, it'll just give us some perspective. as to where we are and where the market might be headed if okay the European Central Bank forever has been trying to talk the euro down they've had a little bit of success lately um, all sorts of trial balloons are being floated right now about cutting the uh, interest rate from 25 basis points to 15 and the second trial balloon being floated in the June meeting is to charge um, European banks and large institutions 10 basis points for parking their funds with the European Central Bank. And uh, that would be a fairly bold move. Now, we've seen Switzerland. Uh, we've seen the Bank of New York. We've seen when things really get scary. Uh, we've seen institutions with very, very sound balance sheets charge people to park money there. And when somebody's willing to do that, they're interested in getting their money back. They're not interested in return on investments. So it's a very, very bold move. But it has been done before. So here's where we are. And you can see right here we've got this, this area that um, could use some volume. So we got a seller above 50, and we've got a buyer below 75, and we're currently trading at 137. And uh, the bottom edge of support has been tested. So uh, we've basically been trying to sell 37.25s or better uh, so far this week, and our buy's been in the uh, 75 area. Uh, 75 to 85 and it's worked out fairly well but we don't have a lot of volatility and we're certainly not pumping a lot of volume through um, so when we look at the F2 screen there isn't a lot to work with So you can see right up here, pretty good resistance starts in that 30 to 50 area. Right in here and on the support side, we have spent very, very little time below 85. So we got support at 85 and we've got resistance at 30 and we're currently at 137 even. Uh, so 5 to 15 will be sell one. 25 to 35 will be sell two. On the buy side, we're going to put our um, 75 to 85 there once again. And then 50 to 60 for buy two. And there you have it, folks. May the 20th, 2014.